Hey, Frank. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful we get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. Uh, Courtney, thank you for the invitation. It's wonderful to be here. My name is Frank McKelvin, and I'm the author of SFC, A Poor Man's Battle. And let me explain that title. FSC is a Sergeant First Class. It was my my father's uh, highest rank, uh, and and the book is based on John and Haiti, who were my parents. So that's that's a nod to his highest rank uh, as a career army uh, soldier. Um, and a poor man's battle is is a saying that existed in the family that when a leader starts a war, it's the poor folks who are going to fight the battle. Uh, and my father started his life as the son of a sh- of sharecropping parents. So he, he was among those, those poor folks. Haiti, on the other hand, was raised in Germany during the Third Reich. Uh, so two very different beginnings. Um, and, and the story is of how they came together and how they stayed together um, as products of the of 20th century history. Uh, back to me, I'm, I'm a husband, a father, a brother, uh, a son of John and Haiti on whom SFC, A Poor Man's Battle, is based. Uh, I live in Northern California and I enjoy playing tennis and staying fit. Love that. I would love if you could tell us more about what your book is about. Uh, yeah, so the book, uh, at 60 years old, uh, when, when my mother passed away, I came across a reservoir of documentation and uh, other material that told me I did not know my parents. I did not know my parents until I started diving into these documents. They had kept the story of how they came together um, and, as I said, stayed together. Um, it kept it a secret. Now, I don't. I didn't know why for a while. Uh, now I think I know why. But um, so uh, um, among the reservoir of information that came, I, I I was going through my mother's magazine rack, and out fell a uh, a bunch of letters that she kept together. And among those letters were le- were uh, letters from a her fiance. It turns out who was a German soldier who was deployed to the Russian front. So so there were letters from this soldier uh, written in German um, that she had never shared with us in in any way. Um, Other parts of the house uh, we went through my my father's military records. Um, We found out that he, he petitioned the army to take paternal responsibility for my older sister. So my older sister was, was born illegitimately and, and her, her paternity was uh, in question. Um, uh, also among the, 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 the documentation was uh, a, a telegram from the army to my grandmother, my, my father's mother, that he was missing in action and was a prisoner of war. Uh, we had not known that. And and finally, one of the last things we found was, was uh, a radio that my mother always kept, and she always told us was built by her father, uh, my, my grandfather, my German grandfather. Um, I had it examined by, by a radio historian, and he said it was mass produced by, in Hungary in 1944. So the radio was actually a gift from the German fiance who wrote the letters back to my mother. Uh, So I was confronted by all this trove and and even more of information where I just didn't understand her story and his story. Um, And so this was my attempt to, uh, uh, to bring it all together uh, to historical fact, and and there were some gaps that I I filled in uh, that are not historical. So so the book is historical fiction, although most of most of the book is is historical and and true to fact. 
Love that. What inspired you to write your book? Um, the realization that I didn't understand my, my parents uh, and understanding that it took a world war for me to exist and for my, my siblings to exist. Um, and so understanding that how that, how that happened, um, the details of uh, uh, the traumas that they went through. My, my mother's family was harassed by the Third Reich, my, my German grandfather, who I never met. But he lost his job. He at the uh, uh, they grew up in uh, in Regensburg in Bavaria in, in Germany. He worked at the uh, train depot. He was a porter, and um, uh, he he got accused of being a communist and lost his job. Although he he was never sent to a labor camp, um, uh, he, he was never he was never again employed. Uh, and, and he, he died in 1940. Um, uh, where was I going with all that, Courtney? I, uh, inspiration. I, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, so, so understanding the details of what it took for them to survive. In my, on my, my father's case, the depression. Uh, uh, you know, being uh, fighting battles, being in a war, uh, fighting through the Siegfried Line, being a prisoner of war. Um, dad, dad, John had a first wife. He came back to the United States and married a first wife. I did not know that. They had a son. I did not know that. The mother and son, the, the first wife and the son, died on the same day uh, in 1940. Nine, 1949, and um, didn't know that. Dad didn't tell us that. So uh, that's what inspired him to re-enlist and go back into the army. That's when he met my mother in in Germany. That at that moment, and um, so understanding both of their stories and their trajectories to how they intersected, and then how they were on again, off again. And then ultimately, they they did stay together, and they compromised where they were going to live by moving to Colorado. Um, and so my 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 father John had had a, a career at Fitzsimmons Army Base in uh, in the Denver area, and uh, that's that's where most of our life uh, occurred. Love that. When you were writing your book, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your book is for? Um, I started thinking it was for me uh, mostly, and there was it was very therapeutic for me to uh, to put these things into historical perspective. I spent a lot of time putting together a sequence of events, uh, correlated them to photographs. Um, and, uh, military records. Uh, my dad did write up, uh, uh, some memoirs, uh, uh, and so lining all of those up and understanding how, how things fit in and when they fit in, um, was a big part of what, uh, what I did. Uh, so it, it was to start off, it was mostly for me. But ultimately, I was looking for someone who is a history buff or uh, understanding uh, individual and family dynamics uh, and understanding how traumas are uh, managed. Uh, That kind of reader uh, also uh, came, came into my radar, came into the picture. Amazing. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Oh, thank you for that question. Uh, uh, after I had all this, this package of, of data and documentation, I thought there was something there. So I, 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 I do, I am acquainted with, with another writer. So, so I asked her, I said, Lori, this is what I've got. Is there, 
is there enough material to uh, to support a a book? And um, she thought there was, and she introduced me to uh, Max Friedman. Uh, and Max was my mentor in helping me understand how, guiding me through writing the book. Um, and he ultimately published the book as well. But uh, it took me six years to get through the material. And he was just kind of in a parallel path. And he would look at my material. And when, when there was something that just didn't make sense or it was weak, or I didn't spend uh, the requisite time to really describe what was going on. He told me, um, and you know, he kept me, he kept me, kept me on the straight and narrow. And uh, without Max, uh, there would there would be no SFC, a poor man's battle. Love that. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Yeah, I don't have one. <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, I, uh, I did not write to a schedule on in this project. Um, it was more about what what I was needing and seeking um, to understand the story, to understand the two people that were my parents, and the larger population of the people I knew who who were my. Uh, other relatives, uh, grandparents that I knew, et cetera. Um, but um, ultimately, uh, eventually it came down to, hey, I was, it, it was, as I was approaching uh, the finish of the book, um, I did start to give myself writing schedules where I'd, I'd sit down and, hey, hey let's, let's get this part finished. Uh, let's let's understand what we're doing here. And this reminds me, there was, there was one piece of of my father's history that I did not know, and uh, that was the time he spent in Vietnam. Uh, my father, John, was a young soldier in World War II, and he was an older soldier uh, in Vietnam. I knew nothing about what what he did in Vietnam, where he was in Vietnam, anything that happened during his year in Vietnam. Um, ultimately, I found a gentleman that had served with him uh, partially in Vietnam through the through the internet. And he, he gave me some material, some content that I was able to, uh, to use in the book. Um, it was a, it was a godsend, uh, really. So, um, um uh yeah so schedules for me came at the end uh, at, at near the end of the book prior to that it was just a matter of hey just what what did i want to see out of this love that what do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused um i need um simplicity um i i enjoyed going to the local library um, on weekends and sitting among all these other books, sitting in a relatively quiet space. Um, uh, but then COVID hit. Um, and so then I was spending a lot of time in my, in my office, my home office. Um, and, uh, my home office is more cluttered. Uh, but what I, what I need to write better and to, and to do well is simplicity. I, 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 I need to unclutter my space at home uh, to make it more like a library. <laughs> Love that. What is your favorite writing snack or drink? I love to have a, a good Arnold Palmer. Um, I, I love half iced tea and half lemonade. Um, uh, yeah, a good, uh, good Arnold Palmer is, is exactly what I need and, and nothing else, uh, Arnold Palmer. Love that. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? I do not have a, 
a genre that uh, that I gravitate toward. I'm, I'm not uh, – because of what I recently wrote, I have mostly been reading historical uh, uh, books. Uh, Timothy Snyder has ri- written a few books on uh, the, the elements of, of uh, the emergence of dictators and so forth. I, I have found those to be very interesting, um, but uh, un- understanding the the detailed history of how how Germany went to war um, in 1939, where they went to war, uh, the the book uh, Freddie uh, uh, has had an older brother who went to war earlier than Freddie did. Um, and um, by the way, uh, th- that reminds me, uh, SFC, uh, A Poor Man's Battle, has photographs, has historical photographs, um, and, and it is written from the perspectives of various people, mostly John and Haiti, and they mostly alternate chapter by chapter what's going on at at any given time historically and, and in their families and interspersed with that are a few other people like uh, my German grandmother has, has a little bit to say. Freddie has a chapter, um, but uh, the, the book hits those different perspectives and, and marches through the history and, and the family dynamics at, at the time and the relationships at, at that time. Um, I forgot where I was going, Courtney. <laughs> I thought I'd, I'd... <laughs> no worries. Um, did you want to go to the next question or give it a minute? Uh, remind me what the, what this question was. Um, this one was what type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Oh, I, you know, I, I, I think I, I think I uh, come to the end of that answer. Perfect. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Um, I have always enjoyed reading C.S. Lewis and, and how he writes. Um, yeah, there, there have been other authors that, that I liked, uh, like Mario Uzo, who wrote The Godfather. But that I, I read that so long ago. I mean, I, I can barely remember uh, that. I just know I, I enjoyed reading the book. Um, but over the years, it's been C.S. Lewis, who's uh, it, when I see a book and I know that I hadn't read it, C.S. Lewis is a name that I would just gravitate toward and and know that. Uh, I would enjoy reading it, uh, even knowing nothing about the book. Amazing. What type of books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Uh, my brother, uh, we, we shared a bedroom. Um, and my brother read Charlie Brown books. He, he had dozens of them, there were paperbacks, and uh, they were all about the same size. Um, and uh, he read those constantly, and eventually he read them so often that I started reading them too. Uh, so Charles Schultz um, is is a person that I've known well and uh, enjoyed enjoyed reading Peanuts uh, cartoons, uh, you know, four frame kind of kind of tidbits of of wisdom. Uh, in, imparted, uh, you know, in those just little frames right there, uh, in in those in those peanuts characters. Love that. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Uh, I mentioned Timothy Snyder, uh, and uh, yeah, if I see that, I. I I don't always necessarily buy it, uh, but but I I will always consider buying it. Uh, I'm I'm sort of a value book buyer. Um, I I look for something that is on sale, is uh, you know not not priced too steeply. 
Um, and I, I look for bargains and that's, that's just my nature is I'm looking for, I'm always looking for a bargain. And, and so, uh, I need, uh, I need a sale, something on sale and something that's generally historical in nature. Love that. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Ah, uh, with the reading and not, not the writing necessarily. Right. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, reading is a lot like athletics. I, I spent a lot of time in athletics when I was younger. And athletics exposes inner parts of you, things you don't do well, and discovering things you do do well, and things you have to improve. It's it's very self-realizing. Um I'd say look for those topics w- which strike a chord in you in some way. Uh, find find those topics, and then it's trial and error. Uh, you you got to try it, uh, you know. And if you if you don't if if it it doesn't really strike a chord, well then try something else. Uh, but it's a trial and error um, methodology. Love that. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Uh, very similar. Uh, you be you. Um, writing a book, what I found out is that it, uh, it, you get very vulnerable. Um, you know, and so you open yourself up to criticism. Um, and uh, have a lot of editors that will feed back to you truth. They will, they will feed back to you their impression of what you've written. And, and you got to take that as truth that, that they weren't seeking to, to harm you necessarily, but they were seeking to um, challenge you. So have a lot of you be you but then have a lot of eyes on what you have put down on paper and accept that, that feedback uh, with open arms and, and seek to adjust to, to those, uh, to that input. Amazing. Love that. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Um. I think they're going to be surprised that I'm an author. <laughs> um, my my main career is uh, I'm an electrical engineer, um, and uh, I have spent a career in the electric power industry, uh, specializing in the grid, um, the electric grid. And um, but uh, I, I I think finding out that I'm an author is is the big surprise. <laughs> Love that. Is there anything you would like to say or add? Um, I had something in mind and now it's slipped my mind. Uh, uh, yo, Courtney, <laughs> I'm freezing up here for some reason. Totally fine. We could take a minute so you can think. Um, did you have notes written? Sometimes people scribble words and then maybe it'll jog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I do have some notes here, but I'm not going to, I'm I'm sort of struggling with, um, uh, I am thinking of a follow-up book uh, because I, I think I like, I like writing. Um, and so the follow-up I'm, I'm considering is uh, detailing how somebody who wants to follow in, in my footsteps Find out uh, elements of their parents' lives that that might have been hidden for one reason or another, um, and and kind of guide them to steps that that will help them do that. In in my case, what I found out was uh, Haiti, my mother, her biggest embarrassment uh, was that she didn't want people to know that she was a second wife. Um, there was a stigma for her. Uh, I think that's why they kept all these secrets to, to keep 
that stigma from from getting out there to their kids, that knowledge getting to their children. Um, so there might there might be other parents, other other people out there whose parents might have done the same thing. And uh, the the next book I might write that I'm considering writing is uh, how to get through that material, how to find material so that you can piece together the puzzle. Amazing. Where's the best place for readers to find your book? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? So at this time, uh, Courtney, I am, uh, my book is only available on Amazon. Um, and uh, so that is uh, www.amazon.com slash FSC dash poor dash battle dash Frank dash McKelvin. That, that should get you there. Um, to get a signed copy, um, contact me either, uh, you know what, I, I got to back up here. I'm also very prevalent on LinkedIn. Okay. So, uh, triple W dot LinkedIn dot com and then search for Frank McKelvin contact me and we'll work something out about how to get signed copies. I've signed many copies for my friends uh, who are local here. Uh, I, I love doing that. So uh, contact me. We'll, we'll work something out uh, to, to get you a signed copy. Um, um, yeah. LinkedIn and Amazon. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes so everyone can find you. And again, thank you so much. Courtney, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.